All right, so today we're gonna to talk about complements, unions, and intersections of open and closed sets. This will help us gain some experience with using the defini definitions introduced in the last video, but perhaps more importantly though, it's going to give us different ways to characterize these open and closed sets, and will eventually lead us to defining what's called a topological space. So to start off, we're going to talk about complements of open and closed sets. So the first theorem that we're going to prove is that a set E is open if and only if E complement is closed. So since this is an if and only if statement, we have to prove the forward direction and the backwards direction. So to prove the forward direction, we get to assume that our set E is going to be open, and we need to show that E complement is closed. So if we're going to show that E complement is closed, we need to show that all of its limit points are points of E complement. So to do that, uh, we're going to start off with some point X that we're going to suppose is a limit point of E complement. So what does it mean to be a limit point of E complement? Well, it means that all open balls B about X have the property that B intersected with E complement is not empty. So from this, we can see that uh, there is some point that is in B and E complement. So this means that B cannot be a subset of E, and since this was true for all open balls B about X, then it follows that X can't be an interior point of E. And since E is open, if it's not an interior point of E, then it itself is not a point of E. So if it's not a point of E, then it's an E complement. And then that means that E complement is closed. So now, for the backwards direction, we get to assume that E complement is closed, and that we need to show that E is open. So to show that a set is open, we need to take a point of that set, so we suppose X is an E, and we need to show, eventually, that it's going to be an interior point of E. So, since X is not an E complement, and we know that E complement is closed, then we get to negate whatever it means to not be an E complement, which means <clears throat> there's going to exist some open ball B of X such that B intersect E complement is empty. So if it's in B, then it's not an E complement. And this would mean that B is a direct subset of E and that, and then since we, we were able to find some open ball B that satisfies that property, then X is going to be an interior point of E, and E itself is open. Now, for our second theorem, uh, we can show that a set E is closed if and only if E complement is open. And how can we show that? Well, if we let our set E in this theorem, because it works for any open set, um, then if we put the complement of E into this theorem, then we should see that a set E, E complement is open. So this is the right-hand side now. If and only if, E complement complement is closed. But E complement complement is just E. So we would have a set E is closed if and only if E complement is open. And so these two theorems right here give us a nice way to look at open and closed sets in terms of complements. So the next thing that we can ask ourselves is what do unions and intersections of open and closed sets look like? So the next thing that we're going to show is that if we have an arbitrary union of open sets, 
then the resulting set is also going to be open. And so to show that, uh, we can proceed just like before. If we want to show that a set is open, then we take a point of it, so we let x be an e, and we need to show that somehow it's going to be an interior point of e, because that's the definition of what it means to be open. So since it's going to be an e, then it has to be in one of these e alphas. It has to be in one of these open sets. So if it's going to be in one of these open sets, then it's got to be an interior point of whatever open set it's in. And if it's an interior point of that one open set, it's going to be an interior point of E. And the reason for that is because if it's an interior point of some E alpha, then there exists some open ball that's a subset of E alpha with that open ball containing x. But the important part is, is that that <coughs> open ball b is going to be a subset of E alpha, and E alpha is going to be a subset of E. So that open ball is also going to be a subset of E, which means that it's going to be an interior point of E, and E is going to be open. Now, uh, what we proved previously about the complements is going to come in real use here, because we can say, after proving this, that the arbitrary intersection of closed sets is closed. And how do we know that? Well, a set is open if and only if its complement is closed. So, if we were to take the complement of this expression, then by de Morgan's laws, uh, this be on that same index set. <clears throat> and if we take the complement of these, then if the whole set is open, then after we take the complement, it's going to be closed. And then we're also negating, we're also complementing all of these sets. So if each of those E alphas was open, now they're going to be closed. So with that, we can show that the arbitrary intersection of closed sets is closed. And the final thing that we're going to be able to show is that the finite union and we're going to be able to proceed in a pretty similar manner, but this one's actually going to be a little bit trickier. So if we were to take an a finite intersection of open sets that's going to be finite. I mean, that's going to be open, my bad. So we proceed just like before. We want to show that this set is open. So we're going to take a point X and E and show it's going to be an interior point. So if we let X be an E and it's going to be in this finite intersection, then it needs to be in all of these sets right here. It needs to be in all of these EIs. Now each of these EIs is open, so X is an interior point <coughs> for all of these EIs. Now here's the kind of confusing part. So for it to be an interior point, there has to exist some open ball of radius RI for each of these open sets, such that if we take the open ball about x of radius ri, then it needs to be a subset of ei. Now we want it to be an interior point of e, so the only way that we can accomplish this 
is if the open ball that we pick is going to be a subset of every EI. And how can we do that? Well, we can do that by setting our radius to be the minimum of all these different RIs. Because there's going to be, there's going to exist some RI for each of these open sets, since each of these sets is open. Uh, so we can definitely find this. And then this radius that we pick for this open ball. So we pick our open ball to have radius R. By construction, it's going to be a subset for every EI. So then that means that this open ball is going to be a subset of E. And <clears throat> that means X is then an interior point and that E is going to be open. Now, I didn't mention the finite part. So where does that come in? It actually comes in right here. This radius, we said, was going to be equal to the minimum of all these positive numbers. Now, if this collection is finite, then this radius is going to be zero. I mean, greater than zero. My bad. So this radius is going to be greater than zero. So the choice that we pick for our open ball is always a valid choice. Now, the reason that... We can't let this be an arbitrary intersection is because um, the following example. If we were to take the real number line, R1, and we were to intersect open sets that look like this, So, in other words, um, we're going to let our EIs be <clears throat> from negative 1 over n to 1 over n. If we were to let this get arbitrarily large, n to be arbitrarily large, then these open sets keep on getting smaller and smaller. And if we intersect all of these then in the limit, this open set, in the limit, if we intersect all of these, the only point in the set is going to be the singleton zero. And that's a problem because <clears throat> that point zero isn't actually going to be in any of these open intervals because we're excluding the endpoints. So the finiteness of this intersection is actually very necessary. And then uh, we can take the complement of this theorem right here, characterization of closed sets. So since this whole thing is open, then we would get a closed set if we were to take the complement of this set. So by De Morgan's laws, if we take the complement of this, we would end up with a finite union of closed sets. So that's it for today's video. Um, if you have any questions, let me know in the comments. Hope to see you in the next video.